It's now time for question period. The Leader of Her Majesty is now opposition. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Attorney General. Last night's expose about Ontario's probation system by Carolyn Jarvis on Global National was shocking and appalling. Yep. If you didn't see it, let me read you some of the exchanges in the report. Offenders think probation and parole in Ontario is a joke. Yeah, they think it's a joke. How do you think the public will react if they knew what you know about how offenders are supervised in the community? I think they would be appalled. We are at a crisis, a breaking point, and we are failing the public badly on the public safety front. Mr. Speaker, how long has the government known about the state of Ontario's probation system, and how long have the Liberals ignored this problem? Sir, community safety and correctional services. Well, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank uh, the member uh, for his question. Actually, is that is sudden interest into this because we know their history behind the member. But, Mr. Speaker, if I can say here, uh, part of our efforts to transform our correctional uh, correction in Ontario, and my objective is very simple. And I think we on this side of the house, our objective is very simple: is definitely to rehabilitate the clients and support their reintegration back into our society. One thing that the member may be not know, and I'll share, recidivism is Ontario has been trending downward, Mr. Speaker, over the past decade. And first, I also want to say thank you to the fantastic work that actually our, pro our probation and parole officer do every single day for us to keep our community safe. Of course, we can do more. We can do more. And I've been the Answer. minister since January, and I have not been satisfied with that pace. I'm going to let, I'm going to let you wrap up on uh, indication of this morning's beginning before question period is an indicator. Uh, I'll jump on this real quick. So let's just keep it down. One wrap-up sentence, please. So, Mr. Speaker, I have been the minister since January, and I have to acknowledge I have not been satisfied with the pace, and we're working on this. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, again to the Attorney General, the buck stops at the Attorney General on this file. Now, we have two private members' bill. We have multiple questions, and they're saying a sudden interest. Multiple private members' bills, and there's a sudden issue. Give me a break, Mr. Speaker. Now, back, back to this shocking story. One convicted sex offender had completed a conditional sentence in the community with a strict curfew. He says not once, not once did his probation officer go to his house to check on him. He said, I quote, nobody has ever come, no police, no probation officer. I could have done anything I want. Anything, Mr. Speaker. How does that give us a sense of safety in our communities? Convicted sex offenders are running free in our streets. He added, I could go back and do things because nobody watched. Nobody hit on the door. Mr. Speaker, Question. dangerous offenders are walking our streets, and the Attorney General of our province is responsible. So once again, how long have you known this problem exists in Ontario, and when will the Attorney General of our seated, please. Thank you. Minister? Well, yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'm I'm very happy actually to 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 explain maybe how uh, the ministry responsible in our system works in Ontario. Maybe he's uh, forgotten this since he's in this house and not the federal level. But Mr. Speaker, um, I have to say that one thing that I'm going to be telling him is that parole and probation cases we know have become a lot more complex and can require more supervision. And our, our government actually has recognized this by hiring more parole and probation officers. And in fact, over the last 10 years, the average case loads has decreased from 79 cases per officer to 58 cases per officer. And that gives our officers more time to focus on the rehabilitation and the reintegration Order. of the offenders. And Mr. Speaker, this is, uh, I would say, something that's very dear to me as a Answer. new minister because uh, can I continue sorry okay so mr. speaker I'll continue on my supplemental thank you thank you final supplemental mr. speaker again to the Attorney General the Attorney General is the top legal officer 
in Ontario. That is a fact. And it's easy to pass the buck to a new minister, but this is the Attorney General's mess. This is the Attorney General's responsibility. One probation officer that was interviewed said she wants to go out and check on offenders, but she was told we don't do home visits flat out. The Liberals deny that charge, but we are talking about violent, serious offenders that aren't properly being monitored, uh, monitored in the community. It's unacceptable. There's nothing the government can say that makes this right. It was the Attorney General that ignored this problem for two years as minister, and he continues to ignore this problem. The top legal officer, the top person responsible is the Attorney General. Question. So my question, Mr. Speaker, is understanding this is his mess, his responsibility, will he do the right thing and tender his resignation today? So, um, I, I definitely don't think our Attorney General has to resign. I actually uh, appreciate the effort that he's putting into our justice system, system in reforming, Mr. Speaker. Uh, things that, again, the member will know about uh, when it comes to uh, criminalization and top on punishment, you know, Mr. Speaker. What I'm going to say is our parole and um, uh, our probation and parole officer do a very, very important role in our community. And what they do is also uh, the decision they make to ensure that the community Member is from safe, Stormont. but also that themselves are safe, Mr. Uh, Speaker, is equally as important. They follow the guidelines, they follow the procedure, they ensure that if there's a risk associated with their, um, their safety, their own safety, Mr. Speaker, Answer. they ensure that that is taken into consideration. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to say how Calvary. proud I am of the work of these individuals that Thank keep you. our community safe. Merci. New question, the Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the government House Leader. Since he did not resign and will not take responsibility, let me ask him this. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to the Liberals that some people over the last 14 years have questioned the integrity of this government. You know, gas plant scandal, e-health, orange scandal, Liberal pizza Chief party, Sudbury, and now Canada goose spending spree. So I'm sure the Liberals aren't surprised that the Ontario PC caucus is pushing for an ethics and accountability reform. Mr. Speaker, that is why I ask, will the Liberals help cleaning up Queen's Park and the government of Ontario? Thank you. thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I'm very, very glad to uh, respond uh, to the question that the, the member opposite has raised. Uh, speaker, we are very proud of the work we have done in strengthening accountability uh, when it comes to uh, uh, government and government of Ontario. Speaker, you may recall when we came into office in 2003, that party, the opposition party, left uh, almost a six billion dollar deficit uh, that was hidden. That was hidden from uh, from the side of Ontarians when they actually told everybody, Speaker, oh no, the books are balanced. But when we came in office and we Finish, please. Speaker, when we came in office in 2003 and asked the, uh, the Auditor General at that time uh, to look at the books, Answer. what we found was a hidden $6 billion deficit that the Conservative Party uh, under Mike Harris and this, uh, this leader left behind. Member from Singapore Gray, come to order. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, again to the government House Leader, I asked a serious question about ethics and accountability, and the government is talking about 2003. This is a government that's faced five OPP investigations, right. and they're proud of their record on ethics and accountability. It's unbelievable. They're that out to lunch. Minister now, of Speaker, Education. There are still loopholes out there. While the new rules that ban ministers and stop staff from attending fundraisers, there are no rules that state ministers and their staff can't solicit personal donations from stakeholders. This still isn't a fair playing field. This, there is still cash for access in the province of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, will the Liberals commit today to whip, end second time. cash for access? Will the government House Leader commit that this Liberal government will 
ensure that there'll be no more soliciting donations from their own ministerial question. stakeholders? Yes or no? It's a very clear question. Well, uh, Speaker, it is important to remember what happened in 2003 when the opposition, when they were in government, uh, hit a $6 billion deficit because as a result of that, Speaker, we made Same sure that we brought, we brought in very specific, Same important, idea. accountable measures in place so that that type of behaviour never takes place. As a result, Speaker, one of the things we did was to require the Auditor General to look at Member from Dufferin Caledon, second time. Member from Oxford, come to order. Carry on. As a result of that, Speaker, we, we, we changed the law and we required the Auditor General to, to ensure that uh, before any election, the public, uh, public books are, are audited by the, uh, by the Auditor General so that, that the numbers are provided in, in clarity, uh, in full yes, light, sir. to all parties. Uh, speaker, that was a very important step. Not to mention, Speaker, we brought. All right, we're going to warnings. And just before that, the member from Simcoe Gray, second time. We're now in warnings. Finish, please. And, Speaker, as a result, we also brought in uh, regulation on, on government advertising, Thank which you. the opposition, the Conservatives, voted against. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, again to the government house leader. Once again, I asked a serious question about ethics and accountability, exactly. ensuring that ministers do not fundraise off their own stakeholders. And I got an answer that was completely irrelevant. The government should be ashamed of their, ethic, of their record on ethics and accountability. Five OPP investigations. Wow. It's incredible we talk about criminal investigations. We have to ask which one. So, Mr. Speaker, I will ask again. Right now, there's big loopholes in this cash for access reform. Ministers can fundraise off stakeholders, but also it, it, news broke last year that ministers had fundraising targets to, to raise off their stakeholders. And so if I can't get a commitment from the government house leader to stop fundraising off stakeholders, will he work with us to make sure that having these fundraising targets for ministers becomes illegal in the province of Ontario? Yes or no? Please question. answer the question for the first time today. Thank you. Well, it's because it just feels like the member opposite the leader of the opposition is making things as he's going along. Yes, he because I think he's totally forgotten Bill 2, the extensive work we did in, in, right. in reforming fundraising in the province of Ontario, making it one of the most, uh, most accountable and stringent rules around, around fundraising. I think he's forgotten that we have banned corporate and union donations, uh, that we have uh, required all MPPs and other candidates from attending fundraising events, uh, Speaker. We have limit donation, uh, uh, do donation limits uh, significantly significantly by 90 percent, Speaker, and then we've also put a close to third party and government advertising, and they face new restrictions. Somehow he's forgotten because, Speaker, you know why he's choosing to forget? Because he's trying to distract. He's trying to distract from a very positive budget that we've put forward That's that right. is going to build That's a right. strong and healthy Ontario because, Speaker, he's trying to distract from the fact that he has no policies. That party Thank is you. an empty piece of empty slate. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, my question is for the acting premier. Yesterday, we learned that the premier is selling off yet another batch of shares of Hydro One. Shame. Clearly, the premier and her Liberal government have not learned their lesson, since they're still refusing to listen to the majority of Ontarios who say no to privatization of our electricity system. When will the premier actually start listening to the people? That she's supposed to be serving, Speaker. Thank you, Deputy Mr. Premier. Of Energy. Mr. Of Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise to say that yesterday's uh, tranche of uh, broadening the ownership of Hydro One brought in an additional $2.8 billion for the province, Mr. Speaker. That $2.8 billion exceeds, Mr. Speaker, the $9 billion target that we had. Five billion to pay down debt, four point uh, four billion to uh, go into infrastructure. Well, get what? Guess what, Mr. Speaker? That number is now nine point six billion dollars, Mr. Speaker, with more money going into infrastructure. And where is that infrastructure going, Mr. Speaker? Well, let me let me talk about this. Right across our province. We're going to have infrastructure builds, and I can start off and look at the one here, Hamilton LRT, the Hamilton Go bus facility on Wentworth, Mr. Speaker. That's in the, the leader of the third party's own riding, Mr. Speaker. Answer. We're making sure that we're going to invest 
billions of dollars right now, Mr. Speaker, across the province, Thank building you. Ontario up. Hey. Supplementary. Well, nobody buys that nonsense for a minute, Speaker. 80 per cent of Ontarians oppose the privatization of Hydro One. And it's really sad that this is the only government in the history of Ontario that can't figure out how to build infrastructure without selling off a treasured, revenue-generating public asset when the vast majority of Ontarians don't want it sold off. Families, business owners, municipalities, NGOs, they've all told the Premier loud and clear to stop this wrong-headed sell-off. People need relief from their soaring energy bills. Not to hear that the Premier is going to do even more damage to our already broken system. Why does the Premier insist on moving ahead with this ridiculous sell-off when what the people of Ontario need is for her to finally admit that she is wrong Answer and abandon this scheme once and for all? Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What the people of Ontario need is infrastructure investment, Mr. Speaker, and that's what this party is doing. That's what this government is doing, Mr. Speaker, investing in infrastructure right across the province. In Kitchener-Waterloo, the Ion Regional LRT. In, in Welland, Mr. Speaker, where, where uh, we've got the Niagara Health System that's actually getting significant infrastructure investments. In Oshawa, the Lake Ridge Health Corporation is getting significant investments. And of course, Mr. Speaker, the list continues to go on and on with investments. And that's what we can do, Mr. Speaker, when we actually make $2.8 billion, a total of $9.6 billion, Mr. Speaker. And yes, Mr. Speaker, this was a difficult decision. But doing the right thing for the province, Mr. Speaker, takes difficult decisions. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we're very happy to make sure that we're investing in infrastructure from Kenora to Ottawa yes, to sir. Sudbury to Toronto and Windsor and everywhere else in, Mr. in between, Mr. Speaker, unlike that party that has no plan Thank to you. do anything when it comes to this file. Final supplement. Speaker, you know, the people of Ontario know numbers better than the people that are sitting across the aisle here. Nine billion dollars doesn't come close to the hundred and ninety billion dollars that they claim that they're going to be spending on infrastructure. The bottom line is the figures don't match, Speaker. They didn't need to sell off Hydro One to build infrastructure in this province, and they darn well know it. And you know what, Speaker? Ontarians did not vote for this. The Premier has no mandate to sell off our public hydro utility. And Ontarians have been very, very clear that they don't want this sell-off to continue. Why does this Premier think that her opinion matters more than the opinion of millions and millions of Ontarians? Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The billions and billions of dollars that we're investing in infrastructure, paying down debt, Mr. Speaker, is actually going to have a benefit for this province for decades to come, Mr. Speaker. Unlike that party over there, Mr. Speaker, that once again has no understanding of how this system works or even the energy system, Mr. Speaker. A firm commitment offering means, Mr. Speaker, that we get that money from the investors right away. And we're able to take that money, Mr. Speaker and invest that in LRT in Hamilton. And I know she doesn't like the LRT investment in Hamilton, Mr. Speaker, which makes you scratch your head, Mr. Speaker. What kind of investment in infrastructure do they like? Obviously none, Mr. Speaker, because all they do is stand up and complain, Mr. Speaker. They have no plan on any of this. As I said, I recognize, Mr. Speaker, that this was a tough decision. I recognize it was the Answer. right decision, Mr. Speaker. And when you make the right decision, you invest that in the people of Ontario, and that's what we're doing. Mr. Speaker, we're building Ontario up. New question. The leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My next uh, question is for the acting premier. Electricity isn't a luxury, and it should not be priced like a luxury, Speaker. By giving up the province's majority stake in Hydro One, the premier is guaranteeing that Ontario families will continue to see their hydro bills rise. Why does the premier want to drive up hydro bills for families? Stop it, Minister of Economic Development and Growth is warned. Start the clock. Please finish. Why does the Premier want to drive up hydro bills for families, businesses, and municipalities? 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very pleased to rise and talk about the Ontario Fair Hydro Plan today. On average, a 25% reduction for families, for small businesses and farms. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? Those uh, families that uh, that live in the Hydro One area, they're actually going to see a 40 to 50% reduction, Mr. Speaker, thanks to our government's plan, Mr. Speaker. Bringing forward our Fair Hydro Plan is going to have significant reductions for families and businesses right across the province. Unlike that party, Mr. Speaker, which is telling unnecessarily wrong facts, Mr. Speaker, because when they talk about Hydro One and the broadening of ownership, everybody knows, Mr. Speaker, from the media to folks on the street, that the Ontario Energy Board sets rates, not Hydro One, Mr. Speaker. If they go to their website, they can actually learn about how the Ontario Energy Board sets rates for the province. Mr. Speaker, we've brought forward a very comprehensive plan that will reduce rates for every family across the province. Thank you. Yeah, you better be. Supplementary. How arrogant and out of touch do you have to be to completely ignore 80 percent, 80 percent of the people of this province, 80 percent of your constituents? Can the acting premier explain to this house why, with no mandate at all, and just a year away from being thrown out of office, the premier insists on giving up majority control of our most valuable public asset? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, understanding the system would be important for that party over there, Mr. Speaker. When it comes to the electricity system, the OEB sets rates. And I know they have a hard time understanding that, Mr. Speaker. I know it's very difficult for them, Mr. Speaker, but Hydro One does not set rates. We, Mr. Speaker, have brought forward a plan that is going to reduce rates, Mr. Speaker, by 25 per cent on average. And I know they can laugh about it, Mr. Speaker, but what we've made sure is that families will see this reduction, that we can see families in our remote parts of our province, in our northern parts of our province, seeing their rates reduced by 40 and 50 per cent. Now, I know that they're laughing on that side, Mr. Speaker, because one party has no plan for electricity, has no plan for the province, and on that side, Mr. Yes, Speaker, sir. they have a plan that is pie in the sky and has no action of taking one cent off of bills, Thank Mr. You. Speaker. Final supplementary. This government is doing is kicking their mess down to the next generation to pay for it. That's all they're doing. But you know what? It's the same old story on repeat with this premier. She puts the interests of her party and her powerful liberal friends and insiders ahead of the interests of the people of this province every single time, Speaker. Every single time. Why won't this premier stop looking out for the people at the top? Stop her wrong-headed sell-off of Hydro One and finally show the people of Ontario the respect that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In talking about dealing with messes, it was this government, it was this party that had to deal with the mess that was left by that party and that party, Mr. Speaker, when they were actually in power decades ago, Mr. Speaker, they left the system in a mess. We had to rebuild it, Mr. Speaker. We sent $50 billion. The uh, member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek, is warned. Oh, you said nothing. I know. Sorry. I, I must be mistaken. <laughs> Finish, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and that's why when we're bringing forward $2.8 billion from yesterday's broadening ownership of Hydro One, we're making sure that that $9.6 billion that exceeded our targets, that we're going to make sure that we spend this money on paying down debt yes, and investing in infrastructure in every part of this province, Mr. Speaker, and that's what the people of Ontario Thank asked you. for, and that's what they're getting, Mr. Speaker. New question, the member from Leeds Granville. Thanks, Speaker. My question is for the uh, government house leader. There's a one-year cooling-off period for ministerial staffers who leave government that doesn't go far enough. Staffers should not be permitted to lobby for any companies 
or organizations they had direct dealings with while in government. That's regardless of whichever ministry the lobbying is directed at. We saw what happened when the Minister of Environment's former chief of staff went motoring over to Tesla. And the same month, the government announced lucrative subsidies for Tesla buyers were back. That mm. certainly didn't look right. So, Mr. Speaker, will the government House Leader help us close that loophole, or does he still want the Liberal revolving door to continue? Uh, speaker, thank you very much. Uh, speaker, we uh, we have uh, very strict rules when it comes to uh, the uh, the requirements for for lobbyists. As Speaker will know, under the lobby registration, uh, we have in, in fact enhanced those rules to ensure uh, that any staff that uh, that uh, works here. Uh, when they go in, in private sector, the restriction that's placed upon them uh, to uh, to uh, to lobby the same uh, the same ministry, Speaker, those rules uh, those rules remains. And if there's any opportunity for us to ensure that there are stricter rules in place, we always uh, look at them, uh, Speaker. But that's the fact of the matter is that we we have done a, a tremendous amount of work in making sure uh, that our government is transparent and our government is accountable. In fact, Speaker, what we've seen and most of those times, the opposition has. has has opposed uh, those uh, those initiatives. They have not supported Absolutely. those initiatives. We will continue to make sure, uh, Speaker, that our focus remains on serving the people of Ontario. We're not interested in the partisan games that they continue to play. Thank you. Supplementary. Uh, back to the government house leader. The saddest thing about the Liberal lobbyist revolving door is a lack of accountability. Yep. Integrity Commissioner investigations involving ministerial staff are publicly unavailable. These investigations, which review cases such as conflicts of interest, should be transparent and made public. It's unacceptable that the Commissioner's report currently can be stuffed away on a Minister's desk. Ministers shouldn't decide if the information is made public. It should be a legislative requirement. So, Mr. Speaker, will the Government House Leader commit to ending the secrecy by making the results of those investigations public? Yes or no? Where's the test? Thank you. I, I think uh, I think our integrity commissioner does uh, a, a, a very good and thorough job when it comes to investigating matters. Uh, I have the opportunity to sit on the board of internal economy. I've had the chance to meet with the integrity commissioner as other members from all parties uh, on that board as well. And he continues to talk about how uh, he's uh, he is, is investing more of resources in ensuring that uh, lobbyist registration and all the accountability associated within the legislation is fully met. But clearly, speaker. You know, this line of questioning is nothing but a distraction tactic from the opposition because they don't want to talk about a very good budget that is going to build a stronger and healthier Ontario. Because they don't want to talk about. The member from Leeds Grenville is warned. Carry on. Because, speaker, the, the Conservatives do not want to talk about Answer. how we are making medicine free for children under 25 years old right. and under, how we are lowering our electricity bill, Speaker, by 25 per cent, how we have a fair housing plan that is going to make housing more affordable. Thank you. No question? The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question to the Acting Premier. Last year, the Premier admitted that her hydro policies were a mistake, but she refused to do anything to correct those mistakes. In fact, she's now doubling down on her biggest mistake. She's ignoring the people of Ontario right. and selling off a final piece of Hydro One, wow. Ontario's oldest and most important public asset. Why does the Premier care more about serving the interests of her friends on Bay Street and not the interests of the people of Ontario? Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Deputy Premier. The Minister of Energy. Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, let's go back to November when the Premier did stand up and apologize for decades of mistakes made by all governments, Mr. Speaker, that, that kicked the electricity, curb, electricity file to the curb. We had to act, Mr. Speaker. We had to rebuild a system. It cost us $50 billion to do that. But you know what we have now, Mr. Speaker? A system that is clean, a system that is reliable, and a system that doesn't rely on coal, Mr. Speaker. Please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So we rebuilt that system. 
and we recognize that it came with a cost, Mr. Speaker. So what we did is we brought forward the Fair Hydro Plan, yes, which actually reduces everyone's rates in this province by up to 25 percent on average, Mr. Speaker. That is something that is a benefit for everyone. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, after this final sale, the people of Ontario will no longer have majority ownership of Hydro One. The Premier has sold off the ability of the people of this province to control their hydro system. From now on, Hydro One will focus on private profit, not on the public interest. Speaker, through you to the Deputy Premier, how does it feel to be part of a government that has finally killed off Sir Adam Beck's legacy of public power in Ontario. Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Adam Beck's legacy is uh, alive and well with OPG, Mr. Speaker. And you know what? We're continuing to make sure that uh, the, the Beck generating station produces significant power for this province. But again, Mr. Speaker, it shows that this party has no idea. We're getting there. Finish, please. They have no idea how the system works, Mr. Speaker. And you know what? For making sure that the investments that we're getting from the broadening of ownership of Hydro One will be going into infrastructure investments right across the province now, Mr. Speaker. And you know what also is happening now? A 17 percent reduction on electricity bills right across the province. Thanks to our Ontario Fair Hydro Plan, we've got more coming, Mr. Speaker, and that will help Answer. those families, businesses, and farms right across our great province. Thank you. New question. The member from Barrie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Infrastructure. On this side of the House, we know that infrastructure is about improving the lives of everyday Ontarians by investing in their future. That is why I'm proud that our government is making the largest investment in critical public infrastructure in this province's history. For the first time in 10 years, our province's budget is balanced, meaning more money is available to build schools, hospitals, transit and childcare spaces. Right. I know that the long-term infrastructure plan, which will help manage our historic investment, is coming later this year. But while we double down on our commitment to build Ontario up, the Leader of the Opposition continues to make downright irresponsible statements Shame. about how he would manage Shame. our infrastructure. Shame. Shame. And so my question for the minister is, can he please explain the question. importance of making smart, long-term investments in infrastructure? Minister of Infrastructure. I thank the member for the question. Uh, speaker, we've demonstrated that our government is a sound infrastructure manager, and a balanced budget gives us even more opportunity to invest in Ontario. And we are doing just that by investing $190 billion over 13 years. We have shovels in the ground, building $14 billion worth of major projects, and are procuring an additional $12 billion worth. Wow. But, Speaker, this is all lost on the Leader of the Opposition, who has stated repeatedly that he does not believe governments should be planning projects beyond their mandate. His ill-informed policy means no proper asset management, no planning for the needs of our kids and our grandkids. Brutal. Speaker, Brutal. this is not what any government should want for its people, and it's not what Ontarians deserve. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker, and my thanks to the minister for his response. It is baffling to me how anyone putting themselves forward to shape the future of our province could peddle an approach to infrastructure that ignores best practice. It's incredibly short-sighted and would be a disservice to future generations that need government to make smart, long-term decisions, not ones that are politically expedient. Unlike the parties opposite, our government knows the value of strategic planning. And unlike the Leader of the Opposition, we have a plan to build the $12 billion worth of projects in the pipeline. Critical health care and transportation projects he may very well ignore if he were elected. Speaker, the facts clearly demonstrate our investments are working, sustaining jobs and creating real growth in the economy. That's My question, question to the minister is, could he please share the positive impacts a responsible long-term plan such as ours Thank you. has on our province? 
I'm sure the minister is going to talk about government policy. Oh, yes. Thank you, Speaker. Of course. And the Leader of the Opposition incorrectly criticizes us for not getting shovels in the ground, but the facts speak for themselves, Speaker. We have undertaken a hundred major hospital projects wow. and expanded our colleges and universities. Our investments support over 100,000 jobs per year. And every dollar invested improves quality of life and creates up to six dollars in GDP, Speaker. So when the Leader of the Opposition states that we shouldn't be investing in projects outside of our mandate, he is saying that we shouldn't be planning for hospitals in Fergus, Brockville and Toronto. When he makes statements like that, he demonstrates his lack of understanding and inability to manage the province's infrastructure. And frankly, Speaker, if he doesn't understand that, then he shouldn't be in the running to imagine a $190 billion investment fund Answer. for Ontario's future. No question. The member from Prince Edward Hastings. Thanks, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Energy this morning. Liberal after Liberal has said in this House that rates won't go up after Hydro One was sold. Yep. But the Minister knows that Hydro One has a major rate increase planned for its distribution company, uh -oh. companies. So, so what did he do? The Minister decided to sell the biggest stake in the company yet last night. Was the job of managing Hydro One too difficult for the Minister? Or was he just trying to escape blame for all the new rate increases that are on the way? Uh -oh. yeah. Thank you, Minister Benji. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What we are doing on this side of the House is making sure that we invest $2.8 billion in infrastructure and paying off debt, Mr. Speaker. That's what we're doing on this side of the House, and that's what governments do, Mr. Speaker. Unlike on that side of the House, where they actually— The member from uh, Niagara West, Glanbrook, is warned. On that side of the House, Mr. Speaker, they talk about plans. I know we're. The member from Thornhill is warned. Right after I warned somebody. Carry on. They talk about plans, Mr. Speaker, and that's all they do. They don't write one, they don't promote them. But what they did do, in Mr. Mr. Speaker, in 2012, was write a white paper. And you know what they said in that white paper, Mr. Speaker? No. Their white paper on energy policy specifically suggests opening Hydro One to investment. Ah. The goal is to create more efficient companies that are not That's entirely sir. reliant on public money. The wind's changing today. I wonder where they're going to be later on. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, I can see the Premier hasn't taught her parrot any new lines today. Uh, back to the minister. <laughs> The, the member will withdraw, and I'm not happy with that. I'll withdraw that. Now you may finish. Thank you very much. So what we have here, uh, Mr. Speaker, is we have massive compensation increases at Hydro One. We have brand new rate hikes that are on the way, and we have big Bay Street bonanzas that went ahead last night. The minister is once again more interested in making money for the people sending the hydro bills than he is in protecting the people who are receiving Shameful. the hydro Shameful. bills. What he's done with his plan is add an extra $25 billion in interest onto the ratepayer base for electricity customers in Ontario. So, Speaker, will the minister do the right thing for once and cancel the final sale of Hydro One shares? Please. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and let's finish what that white paper said. Uh, the white paper even goes as far to recognize that consumer prices would continue to be regulated by guess who, Mr. Speaker? The Ontario Energy Board. So obviously, Mr. Speaker, they know it or they try to forget it, like their plan, Mr. Speaker. Um, but you know what, Mr. Speaker? We're going to continue to find ways to reduce rates. 25% is coming, Mr. Speaker. We have 17% now. They have no plan. They have no idea what to do with electricity, no idea what to do with their province, Mr. Speaker. And when asked by the media where his plan was, he laughed. He thought it was funny, Mr. Speaker. The only thing that's a joke in this province is that party, Mr. Speaker. Stop the clock. I think really what's important here is that all of you listen to yourselves. All of you. This is very difficult to do as a solo act. Look inside. You're finished. Thank you. 
New question, the Leader of the Third Party. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Acting Premier. Yesterday, I toured Toronto Community Housing uh, Building on Bleecker Street, and what I saw was nothing short of heartbreaking. Shattered windows, floors completely torn up, bathroom and kitchen in disrepair, mold and damage from one end of the apartment to the other. The Toronto Community Housing said that it will take until January for this particular apartment to be made livable again, yet in this year's budget, the Liberals offered a grand total of zero dollars for urgent repairs to units like this one. Does the Premier not care about families struggling to find a place to live, Speaker? Minister of Housing. Minister of Housing. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, you know, Ontarians expect their government to work hard for them to build vibrant and safe and affordable neighbourhoods where they can, they can raise their families and put down their roots. And that's why this government speaker has increased funding year over year, demonstrating our commitment to building and preserving a fair society where everyone benefits. You know, Speaker, over the next three years, Ontario will invest $600 million in affordable and sustainable housing wow. in the City of Toronto. Wow. Speaker, this includes $340 million alone for homelessness prevention, $130 million to expand affordable housing, housing and today we announced $100 million yes, in land. Mr. Speaker, we get it. We're investing in housing in Toronto. Thank you. What the ministers just acknowledged is that this government has no intention whatsoever of helping municipalities to deal with the repair backlogs that are crippling them and preventing them from allowing people to live in those desperately needed units. Speaker, in Toronto there are 181,000 people, families actually, on the affordable housing wait list. In my hometown of Hamilton, there are 6,000 families waiting. In Durham Region, it's 5,400 families waiting. Even with these staggering wait lists, cities and municipalities are forced to shutter to shutter affordable housing units because they have no money to make the repairs needed for them to be livable again. Can the Acting Premier explain then how the Liberal government has allowed the repair backlog to get so bad and why they have abandoned families who are desperate for Question. a safe and affordable roof over their heads? Thank you, Minister. Well, thank you, Speaker, again. And, uh, let me just continue on to demonstrate how seriously uh, this province takes its investment in city housing, Mr. Speaker. We have spent uh, the, the, the investments that I outlined in my initial statement build on the $1.4 billion that Ontario has already invested toward housing and homelessness programs in the City of Toronto. This year, Ontario has also contributed $43 million to the City of Toronto for those repairs and retrofits that I'm hearing so much about. Mr. Speaker, it's as if the leader of the third party doesn't get it or doesn't want to get the fact that this province is investing billions of dollars in housing across Ontario and billions in the City of Answer. Toronto. Thank you. The question, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Minister, we know that nurses play a very valuable role in Ontario's health care system. In my riding of Kitchener Centre, we see this every day, where the dedicated nursing staff working at Grand River Hospital, St. Mary's General Hospital, at long-term care facilities and community health centres, dedicate their lives to helping others. Everyday nurses support patients right across the province by providing high-quality care in hospitals, long-term care homes, hospices and in homes, and in care centres. Their knowledge, work ethic and dedication to this profession is exemplified every day through the high-quality, compassionate care that they provide. Speaker, this week is Nursing Week in Ontario, and this week we celebrate all of the hard-working nurses across Question. the province of Ontario. Could the minister please join me in acknowledging all of the nurses right across Ontario during Nursing Week? Thank you. Minister of Health, Long-Term Care. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member from Kitchener Centre for this important question. Mr. Speaker, yesterday I had the opportunity to thank uh, the more than 140,000 nurses that work 
day in and day out uh, to the best of their abilities, providing the highest quality of care. I thank them yesterday, but since it is nursing week, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank them again today. In fact, we can never thank our nurses enough for the work that they do. Thank you for the line uh, from the member opposite. But, Mr. Speaker, the member is absolutely right that nurses across this province work so hard every single day to provide high-quality care to patients across this province. And today, I'm so proud to stand and thank all nurses in Ontario for the critically important work that they do. Together with nurses and the associations Answer. that represent them, we have made great progress, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Speaker, I'd like to thank the minister for his response and for his dedication to working with nurses across the province. And in fact, on this side of the house, I believe we have two nurses among our ranks, and I'd like to thank them for the work that they do. As part of yeah, and also soon. As part of Nursing Week, I will be taking part in Take Your MPP to Work Day. Since 2001, the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario has reached out to MPPs across the province to give us an up-close and personal view of the skills required to ta uh, take care of patients in a variety of work environments. For the past 17 years, MPPs have visited registered nurses in diverse settings, such as hospitals, family health teams, community health centres, and post-secondary institutions. I look forward to working with the hardworking staff Question. at a Schlegel Village's long-term care facility at the end of the month. Speaker, could the minister please speak to the investments our government is making to support Ontario nurses? Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since uh, this government took office in 2003, there are more, almost 30,000 more nurses employed in this province. And in fact, the number of nurses employed has increased every single year for 12 years in a row. But in the budget, the 2017 budget that we're proposing, we're proposing an additional $145 million over the next three years to help with the recruitment and retention of nurses, Mr. Speaker. And that's in addition addition to another $15 million to expand interprofessional care teams across Ontario. I'm so pleased with this investment, as are our nursing organizations. Uh, the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario speaks to the $15 million for interprofessional teams, saying it's welcome news, as is the pledge to increase by $135 million compensation for primary care professionals, including nurse practitioners and RNs, Mr. Speaker. New question, the Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Labour. Ontario workers have the right to decide which union they belong to. Recently, members of ATU Local 113 tried to exercise that right, and what happened when they did? They had a U.S.-based foreign union put their Canadian union into trusteeship, seize their Canadian assets in order to quell dissent. Mr. Speaker, why isn't this government acting to prevent foreign takeovers of Ontario unions? Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, um, I, needless to say, I'm surprised by the question, Speaker. I, 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 I will clearly admit that, Speaker. I think, uh, I think there must be pigs flying out there right now as well, Speaker. But certainly, Speaker, you know, standing up for the people of Ontario. Speaker, the question I know is a good question, and I understand the circumstances. Yeah, the labor us. relations regime, Speaker, in the province of Ontario is second to none, Speaker. We have organized labor that works with government. We have business that works with government, Speaker. And these rules have come about because of the efforts of organized labor and people working out their issues in the workplace together. Speaker, we're taking a look at the labor relations regime in the province of Ontario under the changing workplaces review, Speaker, and I'm, uh, I'm expecting to get some excellent advice and be able to share that advice. Let it go enough. The member from Renfrew and Nipissing, Pembroke, is warned. Wrap up sentence, please. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the, uh, the labour relations regime in the province of Ontario is healthy, Speaker, and I expect as a result Thank of you. the changing workplaces review, it's going to get even. Thank you. The supplementary. Mr. Speaker, back to the Minister of Labour. My question was about foreign back takeovers. I did not get an answer, and hopefully this time we will. Local 113 was locked out of their office by the foreign backed ATU. 
Their leadership put it this way. This is an outright attack. It's an invasion on our autonomy as Canadians and Canadian workers. And where has this government stood while 11,000 local 113 members are in turmoil? They've been absent, they've been silent, and they've removed themselves from this, from this debate. Mr. Speaker, when will this government stick up for our Ontario and Canadian Union members against foreign-backed attack? Will they help? Will they stand up? Yes or no? Labor. Speaker, this government has an excellent relationship with organized labor in the province of Ontario. It's a two-way street. When they bring information forward, when they bring ideas forward, Speaker, they're listened to. Solidarity now, this is forever. coming from a party that, on the order docket, Speaker, in this House, has a private member's bill that wants to ban card-based certification, Speaker, oh. in the province of Ontario. And they stand up. They stand up here and try to lecture us on labor relations, Speaker. The member should be ashamed of himself. You see it, please. You see it, please. Order. New question. Member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Acting Premier. Today, Community Living Ontario is here, lobbying on behalf of thousands of Ontario families and their support workers who have needed help desperately from this government for years. They are still waiting. Abdullah Yar Khan, for instance. Abdullah is 16 from my community of Windsor. Abdullah has severe autism and is unable to communicate his needs. He has been excluded from school because of lack of supports in the education system. His parents, with their own health issues, struggle with his care. They don't receive support or respite during school hours, even though Abdullah isn't allowed to attend school. What funding, direct programming, or direct support does the Wynn government have in place for Abdullah and his parents? Thank you, Deputy Premier. Uh, to the Minister of Children and Youth Services. Children and Youth Services. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and thank you for the question. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the new Ontario Autism Program uh, that we'll be bringing forward uh, quite shortly. Um, this is uh, a year before it was initially planned. Um, and we're going to go into full implementation uh, in 2018. This plan will create 16,000 new spots. It'll create um, the amount of spaces for ABA uh, during, uh, during that transition, reduce wait times to six months or less, and increase access to early diagnosis. And also, it'll provide children and young people, regardless of age, Mr. Speaker, with more flexible services based on their unique needs. We're investing over half a billion dollars over the next five years uh, for services to deliver programs that I think parents and young people here in the province can be proud of. Yes, sir, thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Back to the Acting Premier. Speaker, according to Community Living Ontario, the money announced in, the, in this budget will only work towards stabilizing workforce funding, badly neglected and in need of fixing, but was actually promised back in 2014. Millions of dollars in base funding increases are needed. What's needed is help for Abdullah and his parents. And it's not just Abdullah, Speaker. Thousands of desperate parents of aging children, fast becoming adults with developmental disabilities, need supportive housing and programs. What does the Wynn government have to say to Abdullah's mom, Shabana, and Mary Beth Rochelo? and Michelle Hallou, and Shirley Knight, and the thousands of other parents in this province who are not receiving the services that they need for their children. What are you doing for other Ontario families in this province? Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Minister. Of Community and Social Services. Mr. Community and Social Services. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm so glad to have this opportunity to thank all the members of the community living agencies who are here with us today, because uh, we know that they are a very important partner with our government in terms of delivering services. I'll keep it up. The member from Hamilton Mountain is warned. Finish, please. 
They are our very valuable partners as we uh, transform the system that we have currently in Ontario to serve those with developmental disabilities. And of course, we had our unprecedented $810 million increase to the budget over the last three years. And this is why I'm so pleased, and I'm sure the member yes, opposite sir. will be supporting our proposed budget this year, wherein we will be providing $677 million. For Thank you. New question. Uh, the member from Etobicoke North. Merci, le Président. My question is My question is to uh, Minister, as you will know, post-traumatic stress disorder, known of course uh, to physicians as PTSD, is a significant risk to the health and well-being of people working in certain occupations and of course regularly face or affected by traumatic situations. And I understand we have a number of our first responders and our uh, security forces here, so I'd like to welcome them in advance. Uh, Speaker, mental health in the workplace is an issue that demands the attention of everyone, government, the stewards of our legislature, employers, employees, unions, uh, and so on. This is especially an important issue for our first responders who, as I said, Speaker, uh, have to deal with these daily stresses. So can the minister please describe what we've done to offer PTSD support for our first responders? Thank you. Minister of Labour. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for that very, very important question. It was about a year ago, Speaker, a little over a year ago, that this House, to its credit, unanimously passed Bill 163, Speaker. Okay. And it's a testament, I think, to the ability of this House to work together in, honor, in order to honour the work that's done by some of the people that have joined us into the, in the House today, Speaker. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder is an issue that hasn't been talked about in the past in the, in the way it should have been, hasn't been treated in the way that it should have been, Speaker, in the past. Some of the first responders today from the OPPA, the, the Ontario Provincial Police Association, was so instrumental in ensuring that government, the opposition parties and the third parties listened to the concerns that they had about the membership, what their membership was going through, and the remedies that were yes, needed, sir. Speaker. I want to thank them for their input. It certainly has worked. We've got a bill that's working now, Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker, and thanks to you, Minister. Uh, speaker, as a doctor, I can outline very briefly, unfortunately, individuals who do suffer from PTSD, whether it's kind of chronic anxiety or palpitations or high blood pressure, sleepless nights, these are things that truly, unfortunately, affect many, many Ontarians, and therefore they deserve the respect and the management from the stewards of here at our legislature. Speaker, we know that PTSD is a serious and debilitating injury, a chronic condition that Ontario's dedicated first responders are unfortunately more than twice as likely to suffer from than the general population. They put themselves in harm's way each and every day to ensure our collective safety. Speaker, can the minister please describe some of the supports and benefits these workers will receive according to this new legislation? Thank you, Minister. Speaker, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, uh, to, the, uh, to the member for asking this question again for the, uh, the supplementary speaker, because I, speak, I think, Speaker, with the people we have in the House today from the uh, Ontario Provincial Police Association, as I said, they're a very, very instrumental speaker. These are people that put themselves in harm's way so that our communities remain safe. These are people that run towards danger when the rest of us are running the other way, Speaker. What we have done, and perhaps something that wasn't talked about enough during the uh, passage of the bill, is we said every employer in the province of Ontario has to prepare a PTSD prevention plan and has to submit it to me as a Minister of Labour. Those plans started arriving about two weeks ago, Speaker. It's my intent, once I have all the plans, is to publish these plans oh, good. so that Let's every go. first responder is able Answer. to avail themselves of the best practices that are being used by the entire first responder community in this province, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. And your question, the member from Thorn Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This, my question is to the Minister of Transportation. This morning, a City of Toronto report revealed, and the Mayor spoke out, on the state of transit in Toronto. The report Sad. showed that the province must prioritize the downtown relief line. Mr. Speaker, the relief line is needed to support the Young Subway extension to Richmond Hill. Both are vital projects. But Mayor Tory made it clear, if the province doesn't step up and match funding, for the downtown relief line, the Young Subway expansion will be in jeopardy. 
Mr. Speaker, does the minister ever intend on funding the Young Subway and the Downtown Relief Line, or does he plan to sit idly by and watch both projects collapse? Yeah, right back. Thank you. Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, uh, Speaker. I thank the member from Thornhill for her question this morning. I uh, am aware of the fact that the City of Toronto will be coming forward with a staff report regarding uh, a couple of uh, very important transit projects. Uh, speaker, and uh, I would encourage members on all sides of the House, including the member who's asking the question this morning, uh, to uh, take a close read of the staff reports that are uh, coming out uh, of the city. Uh, speaker, I've said this many times, both in this chamber and outside, that there has been no provincial government in history that has That's invested right. more in public Barry transit in the city of Toronto, around the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area, and frankly, Speaker, in communities right across the province like Waterloo, Ottawa and so many other speaker. Uh, this, uh, this previous budget that the Minister of Finance introduced for 2017 included, for example, an additional $30 billion to fund wow. infrastructure province-wide. Speaker, and of course, every member will know, not that many Answer. weeks ago, the Premier announced that over the next number of years, this government will be showing leadership on transit by doubling the provincial gas tax program, wow. speaker, helping 99 communities across Ontario. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back to the minister. The last time I checked, every open and running subway station in the province of Ontario was opened by a PC government. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, these are the minister's constituents in the 905. The Liberals could be partnering with the City of Toronto, yet there is a lack of support and a lack of commitment for the 416 and the 905. Because the Liberals are picking a fight with Mayor Tor member from Durham is warned. Finish, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'll say to people at home, I must be doing something right because they're heckling. Because the Liberals are picking a fight with Mayor Tory, the Liberals are putting other transit projects at risk. Question. Projects that impact the 905 and my constituents in York Region. Is this minister committed to both projects, or is he just trying to add the Young Subway extension to the long list of Liberal Transit projects Thank that you. won't get built for decades? Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Speaker. The, only because the member in her preamble to the supplementary question decided to try and give us a bit of a history lesson, Speaker. Everybody in this province knows the last time that Conservatives ruled in the province of Ontario. They killed and filled the Eglinton subway, Speaker. Yeah. But, you know, and so, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, whether we're talking about questions relating to standing up for workers' rights or we're talking about questions relating to public transit in the province or the city of Toronto, Speaker, really and truly, the Conservative Party here in Ontario should not be attempting to give our party lessons on any of these issues, Speaker. I will, I will also say again, I've said this before. This is a government that's investing more in public transit than any government in history, both in Toronto and Speaker. This morning, I was in that member's riding Answer. at the Rutherford GO station to announce that we are significantly en enhancing and upgrading, including adding 1,200 new spaces to a GO thank station wow. in the riding of Thornhill. Speaker, she can thank me later. We have with us, we have with us today in the speaker's gallery, some very special guests. They are here on the occasion of Europe Day to celebrate peace and unity in Europe. This date also commemorates. I'm getting heckled for even making an introduction. This date also commemorates the historic, the historical Schuman Declaration, which set out a plan for political cooperation in Europe, and it's seen as the beginning of what is now the European Union. Please join me in welcoming the Consul Generals of Austria, Bulgaria, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Malta, Portugal, Romania, Spain, and the United Kingdom. Welcome to all of our Consul Generals. Minister of Research and Innovation and Science on a point of order. Order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's a distinct pleasure of me to welcome Professor Mohammed Khalid Nadwi, Vice Chancellor of Sheikhul Hadith Network College in Lucknow, uh, India. 
accompanied by Mr. Mateen Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad Afwan Amin, and Mr. Shahzad Muhammad Amin, accompanied by Imam Dr. Said Faizi, President of Al Nadwa Educational Islamic Center, in my riding of Richmond Hill. I'd like to introduce from Community Living in Halliburton Court Lakes Brock, Kirsten Dodson, Richard Semple, and Randy Netherton in the two Queen's Park. Thank you. Thank you. Elgin, Middlesex, London on a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I just noticed in the gallery uh, an employee of mine at my constituency and also worked for former uh, Speaker Steve Peters. Frank Skanetsky is here with us today. Thank you. Welcome. I just, just thought I'd say that. We have a deferred vote on the motion uh, for closure of the third uh, motion of the third reading of Bill 84. Call on the members. This will be a five minute bill.
All members, please take your seats. On April the 24th, 2017, Mr. Fraser moved third reading of Bill 84, an act to amend various acts with respect to medical assistance in dying. Mr. Flynn has moved that the question be now put. All those in favour of Mr. Flynn, motion please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Nack. Mr. Nack. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Sousa. Mr. Sousa. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Duca. Mr. Duca. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Codry. Mr. Codry. Mrs. Mangas. Mrs. Mangas. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Domerle. Ms. Domerle. Mr. McGarry. Mr. McGarry. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassy. Mr. Jassy. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Ms. McMahon. Ms. McMahon. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Ms. Nidu Harris. Ms. Nidu Harris. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Milton. Mr. Milton. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Ms. Vernil. Ms. Vernil. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. All those opposed, please rise. One at a time, be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Monroe. Mr. Monroe. Mr. Urich. Mr. Urich. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipee. Mr. Pettipee. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Cho. Mr. Cho. Monsieur Bisson. Monsieur Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Tabin. Mr. Tabin. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natashak. Mr. Natashak. Madame Gelinas. Madame Gelinas. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Shermanta. Ms. Shermanta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. The ayes are 48, the nays are 39. The ayes being 48 and the nays being 39, I declare the motion carried. Mr. Fraser has moved third reading of Bill 84, an act to amend various acts with respect to medical assistance in dying. Is it the pleasure of the House motion carried? No. I heard a no. All those in favour say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say nay. nay. In my opinion, the ayes have it. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bell. Bless you. Mr. Fraser has moved third reading of Bill 84, an act to amend various acts with respect to medical assistance and dying. All those in favour, please rise. One at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Nackey. Mr. Nackey. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Duga. Mr. Duga. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Codry. Mr. Codry. Mrs. Mangas. Mrs. Mangas. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Darmerla. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassy. Ms. Jassy. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Ms. McMahon. Ms. McMahon. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Ms. Nidu Harris. Ms. Nidu Harris. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Milch. Mr. Milch. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. 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 Mr.
Monsieur Bisson. Monsieur Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Tabin. Mr. Tabin. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natashak. Mr. Natashak. Madame Gelina. Madame Gelina. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Mr. Monta. Mr. Monta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. All those opposed, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Urick. Mr. Urick. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Miller Perry South Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry South Muskoka. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Cho. Mr. Cho. The ayes are 61, the nays are 26. The ayes being 61 and the nays being 26, I declare the motion carried. Reading the bill, troisième lecture du projet de loi. Be it resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. We have a deferred vote on the motion of closure on the motion for third reading of Bill 39. Call in the members, this will be a five minute bill. On April the 11th, 2017, Ms. McGarry moved third reading of Bill 39, an act to amend the Aggregate Resource Act, Resources Act and the Mining Act. Mr. Flynn has moved that the question be now put. All those in favour of Mr. Flynn's motion, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mr. Nack. Mr. Nack. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Sousa. Mr. Sousa. Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Barnetti. Mr. Barnetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Codry. Mr. Codry. Mrs. Mangas. Mrs. Mangas. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Domerlin. Ms. Domerlin. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassick. Ms. Jassick. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Ms. McMahon. Ms. McMahon. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Ms. Renew. Ms. Renew. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Arna. Mr. Arna. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Ms. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cho. Mr. Cho. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Tabins. Mr. Tabins. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natashak. Mr. Natashak. Madame Gelina. Madame Gelina. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Mr. Monta. Mr. Monta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky.
The ayes are 49, the nays are 39. The ayes being 49, the nays being 39, I declare the motion carried. Ms. McGarry has moved third reading of Bill 39, an act to, to amend the Aggregate Resources Act and the Mining Act. Is it the pleasure of the House the motion carried? I heard a no. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. All those opposed to the motion, please say nay. In my opinions, the aye have it. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bell. McGarry has moved third reading of Bill 39, an act to amend the Aggregate Resources Act and Mining Act. All those in favour, please rise one at a time be recorded by the clerk. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mr. Nackey. Mr. Nackey. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Mrs. Sandals. Mr. Sandals. Mr. Sousa. Mr. Sousa. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Carr. Mr. Carr. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Hunter. Mr. Hunter. Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Codry. Mr. Codry. Mrs. Mangas. Mrs. Mangas. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Mr. Darmerlin. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Jassick. Mr. Jassick. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Nidu Harris. Mr. Nidu Harris. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Milton. Mr. Milton. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Vernil. Mr. Vernil. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. Mr. Miller Perry Sam Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sam Muskoka. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Yurk. Mr. Yurk. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cho. Mr. Cho. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Horvath. Mr. Horvath. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Sattler. Mr. Sattler. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Natasek. Mr. Natasek. Mr. Angelino. Mr. Angelino. Mr. Fife. Mr. Fife. Mr. Forrester. Mr. Forrester. Mr. Monta. Mr. Monta. Mr. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gretzky. Mr. Gretzky. The ayes are 75, the nays are 13. The ayes being 75, the nays being 13, I declare the motion carried. Good reading of the bill. Troisième lecture du Brésil de l'Ordre. Resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. There are no further deferred votes. This House stands recessed until 3 p.m. this afternoon.